So here we go. Uh, guys, what, welcome back. This is Three Comic Money with the entire crew here. And we figured let's start off the new year with Mike Mayhew, who started us all off on this crazy adventure with artists. With artists. And we're so excited so, to have him back. Yes, uh, he was our first to be back. Uh, if you don't if recall, you don't recall he did three episodes with us at one time and we broke them up and we, we had a, basically the entire month of July was the Mayhew month. We covered <laughs> gorillas and westerns and shoot, I can't even remember the other one. Uh, uh, word balloon covers. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It was covers. a lot of fun. We got, yeah, I love geeking out with you guys. <laughs> it, it was a blast. Uh, we've, as you, if you've been following us, we've changed our model a little bit. We still talk comics. We still talk themes. But we don't quite pull up our favorite three. We, we're getting a little bit better at it. Um, this time, uh, Mike, you've chosen an awesome, awesome thing. And it goes right along with some of your exclusives we'll talk about. Um, Venom. Uh, why Venom? Oh, man, Venom. I mean, um, you know, um, Venom is that type of character. You know, people like Deadpool, people like Wolverine. But when I'm at a Comic-Con and people are going by the table and they see something I've done of Venom... Like, they want to take their clothes off. They just, like, lose their mind. <laughs> you know, something about that character. I don't know if they were kids when it came out or or he's kind of a little more edgy, a little more dangerous. I mean, um, there's so many levels that I think he plays on. But, you know, that's that's people's Spider-Man that are in the new generation, Yeah, I think. You know, that's their, that's their Bruce Banner. That's their Peter Parker, Eddie Brock, you know, and the mythology that goes with it. And uh, I just think there's so many cool aspects to his, um, you know, the symbiotes and all the goo and the gore that you can get away with. It's not too violent in Marvel. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yep. some of the powers that, like, Carnage has with, like, the weapons that can come off him. And, you know, when you get into, like, absolute Carnage and all these crazy incarnations, um, you know, it just it just rips the roof off of, like, excitement and, and you know, what you can do in comics, the fun you can have in comics. Yeah. yeah, and I think I think from a fan perspective too, it's just you can see that artists just go kind of ape shit with with just all the stuff, and yeah. just uh, they can really kind of flex their artistic muscles on that character, and I think yeah. that's really fun for the reader too to, to sort of see how everybody handles the character. Yeah, um, it's like the type of stuff McFarlane captures best, who you know created yeah. the character. It's it's that like mo monster like. You're in school, you're drawing monsters for your buddies, and you're adding extra teeth and like <laughs> slobber coming down, and they're like, oh yeah, that's it. You know, and it's like, I don't know, you guys probably know my work as being some of it being like pinup or more refined mm -hmm. or illustrative, but it's so fun to just cut loose with venom. Like, you just you can't go wrong as long as you're having fun. That's, yeah, I hadn't even thought of it that way. I like, when you think about it, like Amazing Spider Man 300, the first appearance or whatever. The ridiculousness of as many copies as that are out there, and people still go ape shit over this book, and they still want to have not just a nine point eight; they want like three all versions and everything. Oh, yeah, it, it mm. amazes me for a modern book that is highly overprinted. Yeah, um, I was thinking the other day as far as that goes because I think about that with my store a lot. Like, um, you know, it's probably better to focus on Spider Man or Venom because there's more collectors of Spider Man than let's say legion of superheroes no. i bet you there's more collectors of asm 300 than there are of let's say daredevil oh yeah <laughs> you, you know yeah, there are yeah. one cover with all the homages you've seen the guys on facebook with all oh, the yeah. tabs in their man cave you know we've got a bunch of guys we've got a bunch of guys that do uh foreign comics yeah and the set the foreign set for Spidey 300 is, oh. first of all, insanely large, and there's a couple okay. of really rare ones. But man, these guys just geek out hour after hour after hour about that set, and they yeah. just keep on finding them. They're like, "Oh, I got the the Brazilian one, and I've got the Croatian one, and I've got I don't even know what they are I'm making them up." Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's, it's intense. that whole '90s Marvel, early late '80s Marvel explosion. I mean, you know, Jim Lee was huge on X Men and that kind of thing, but. I don't know. I can't think of an X Men Jim Lee image that was as iconic as that ASM three hundred cover. No, no, I couldn't. There's yeah. some great, like great covers, but nothing in comparison to three hundred. Uh oh, you put it in my head. <laughs> yeah, break out Italian. Yeah, I had to get my Italian. Italian? Out, so. I got the oh. Italian version of three hundred. I'm lame. I just have the American. Yes, <laughs> well, but I do have a, a newsstand and a direct. Oh, nice. <laughs> but I mean, at the same time, you're going. 
there's thousands of them out there and people still, you got to have one. I mean, it's, you're, you're not a collector if you don't have amazing 300. Yeah. Um, but I do, what I do appreciate though, is the going into Venom, bringing up one of my favorite covers and Mike, it's, I think it's one of yours as well. The, the next cover that Venom appeared, well, the full, full Venom, uh, uh, technically yes. 315, but I, this oh, one here. One of my yeah, I mean, favorite covers of all time. I mean, uh, yeah, there's just so much going on there. I mean, it's, you know, McFarlane just really uh, stole the show when it comes to drawing Spider-Man. I mean, you yeah. know, we're kind of used to Romita, and, and I love Romita to death, but he, he just added a whole other, he elevated sort of uh, Spider-Man's, like, look with all the detail and the webbing, and it's, you know, the characteristics he gave Spider-Man. But then, you know, the, the blocking on that, the way he has sort of Venom crouching and, it fills the cover so much, you know, with those poses, yeah. uh, man, it's just got everything going for it. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. It's the, it's the, the color pops and there's the, there's the burst from the background that really draws your eye to the center point and everything, everything's there. It just has everything. It's classic. Yeah, it allows the trade dress to be there and not be in the way. Oh yeah. Right. Oh I yeah. All work. It, the cool thing about that amazing Spider-Man logo is, you know, you kind of want it on the cover. Like some logos, you want the Virgin because the logo's not that great. But that Spider-Man cover uh, logo yeah. is so iconic. It's a piece of art into it in and of itself. Well, the little Spider-Man hanging in the corner box. Oh, yeah. on. <laughs> well, then the where the the direct edition little barcode where the barcode would be. Yeah, yeah. Freaking Venom drawn in that. Like, I mean, yeah. McFarlane definitely mastered using the pool. Everything that had to be there, he mastered how to put it on there in the right way. And this is one of those covers that. I mean, Mike, I can think back, uh, Morello, I can think back to being at that con together and I'm selling books and having to convince a kid to buy this book for cheap. And not that, really cheap. And I sold it for like 40 bucks at the time, which is just two years ago. Yeah. And like, because Venom all of a sudden took off with Kate's run, which was peaking, I think maybe four or five of Kate's run, which uh, I mean, uh, Mayhew, Mike Mayhew, sorry, I have to say your last names because there's two Mike's in this room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, because you, you've now started doing some of the variants or the exclusives for it, but man, Kate's has made Venom. Every kid and their mom wants to be a Venom fan now. It's it's ridiculous because of the way Kate sells it. I mean, yeah. it's like what McFarlane did for Spider Man back in the day. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's exactly right. The mythology he's creating is really yeah. expanding what you thought Venom could be. Yeah. Well, and I think I think I've brought this up with other Kate's things that we've talked about too. But when I talked to him a couple of years ago, and Chris, you were with me that day too, um, he was really, really adamant about his his sort of personal life being put into his characters, and he does it in all of his others too. He's done it in in Redneck, and he's done it in some of his other books. But he said, "Look, I took Eddie, and I made him me, and and I I've put a lot of my personality into the character, and this this duality between him and what he struggles with, and some of his personal stuff, and I think." from a literary standpoint that allows readers to really latch onto the character and sympathize with him. And that really has drawn the, the spec more around the story and less around say covers like it, you know, like it used to. And yeah. now it's the combination of both. Now it's the, the great story with the best cover that you can have the coolest character. And it's just this coalescence of a beautiful thing that has really, really done well for everybody. Yeah, he, he uh, you know, I, I like I, I wasn't the biggest fan of that stuff in the 90s for whatever reason. I was in other directions, like with Zorro and stuff like that. But if, I, if I'm if i not mistaken, maybe Eddie Brock was a little more of a one-factor sort of character before. And yeah. now he's a little bit more of a well-rounded uh, character. And, you know, um, everyone always associates Marvel with Peter Parker as being sort of the typical Marvel hero with uh, all the troubles that he has to deal with. You know, he, there's more drama outside of the costume than when he's wearing the costume. And it seems like Eddie Brock is sort of rising to that level. Oh yeah. Yep. In a 2000 absolutely. level way, you know, in a more gritty kind of yeah. realistic way. Yeah. And, absolutely. And without the baggage of sort of, you know, um, Peter Parker is someone always got the baggage of the fact that he's a character from the sixties and a lot of the tropes and the stories fit well then, but you got to kind of change him now, or uh, you know what I mean. Whereas oh, yeah. Brock is just a straight out 21st century character, even though he was created before. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. he's grown into his own thing. He's not like Spidey's you know, villain anymore. He's his own character. Yeah, absolutely. 
So this yeah. is this is another one from the nineties. This is I was his first series or no? It's Carnage. It's one of the first series. Uh, Mike Mayhew, why why'd you pick this one? Why'd you like this cover? You know, again, I mean, this just has everything any Venom fan would want. You got Carnage. You got Venom. You got the the symbiote getting ripped off. I mean, look how it fills the space and all the tendrils and the goo and it's just it's fun. It, I mean, there's just nothing wrong with that cover. You know. Oh yeah. I did a little research at that signature. It's a fellow named Andrew Wildman. And I think he was a UK artist and he drew this series. I believe this series was written by Larry Hama. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't think Carnage. I realized that. G.I. Joe, Larry Hama. Yeah. And he, so he penciled the whole series and did the covers. And okay. um, I think this is the best of the covers, but there's some other really great ones too. They're almost like uh, in a proto Brian Hitch sort of style. You know, oh, yeah. like he yeah. was a UK artist, so he had that kind of a flair that some of those UK guys did at Marvel in the in the nineties, late eighties. But well, uh, yeah, well, again, like love it. A lot of these nineties series, you'll find that there's a gem in like every one of the series. There's just one cover that just that catches you. Now, I I would I would think I lean on Lethal Protector being probably the best as far as across the board. All six covers being pretty good. Uh, but, there's some gorgeous, gorgeous thing. Of course, uh, abs- what is it? Along came a spider and night visions, and there's so or not night visions, whatever it's called. There's a suicide something. I mean, there's all the original sin. Is Orig- it written as a not original sin? Um, Dark sinner Day. take all. Sinner take sinner all. Take yeah. all. Yeah. yeah, there's just a lot of really fun covers, and I'm glad you chose a cover just to represent it. I mean, and I think this is probably yeah. one of the best. Anytime you throw carnage in there. Um, it just makes it even more exciting. Well, this does what you were saying, Mike. This fill this fills the the canvas. It's a really great composition. There is no room for you know for there's there's no there's no blank space that's being unused here. Which I mean, sometimes negative space is a good thing. It depends. But yeah. in, but in this case, you just want the stuff everywhere, and we've, and we've got. It. Yeah, you always want to see that white spider logo on the chest. You got his face big. I mean, everything's got its own little space, but works perfectly. And who doesn't want to see this in Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage? Oh, yes. Right? <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. I, 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 I that should be fun. We will see something like this. I hope so. I really do. Yeah. So, so I guess then the question becomes, and because the next few covers and books we want to talk about, is Venom Eddie Brock or is he, let's go with the first one, Matt Gargan? Or, I mean, how like... Who is Venom? Uh, like so, Pete. Why'd you choose this cover? First off, I just love this Grant off cover. It, it's just very straightforward, coming right at you. I, I love the gloss, the sheen to it. Like, gives the symbiote like an oil slick kind of look, and the teeth and the fangs. And he's, I don't. Know, I just, it's very simple, but it's very gorgeous. Grant off is so underrated too. I mean, this is what this is one of many examples of so many beautiful covers and he just doesn't get the same love that other people get, but this is an incredible cover. I just sold mine. Sadly. Uh, I just, I kind of had to, but one of those, one of those things, but, but does it, I, I, does it matter that it's not Eddie Brock? Cause this is actually the issue where Eddie Brock becomes anti venom. That's true. So uh, does that matter to venom fans? Like that it's not Eddie Brock is, is venom the symbiote or is venom the Eddie Brock? That's an interesting question. And I guess they play around with that too with Hulk. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes Hulk is separate from Banner, and then mm-hmm. that makes it even just as interesting, you know, because uh, it's it's just something out of the box. I, I kind of like that aspect of it, you know, mm-hmm. where different people can be Venom, but Brock is sort of the, the thing that holds it all together. And the other thing I think about when I'm looking at this, you know, this style is so much different than McFarlane's style. And uh, I think Venom is a character kind of like Batman where he really lends himself to other art, every artist interpreting it in a different way yeah. that kind of adds to the whole. Yeah. Yep. Or Absolutely. Taking exactly what you said to this. Yeah. About <laughs> completely changing. Right. I love it. That's great. I mean, Scotty Young um, and and Scotty Young. Some people love him. Some I've gotten to where I really like a lot of his covers. I especially yeah. like it when he does Spider Man and Venom. Um, yeah. These he that's what I love about Venom as a character. It can be as kitty or as young young Scotty Young esque as you want, or it can be like the Granoff cover. Or when we look at your covers, like you can cover the range, and it's Venom mainly because 
he doesn't have a face. He doesn't have eyes and nose and mouth that say it has to be look a certain way. He has to have yeah. boobs dripping off of him. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I guess, I guess uh, while we're talking, I guess you could attribute some of that to McFarlane, who has that odd way of have he can draw kind of cartoony and comedic but scary at the same time yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know and then and then people can just riff on whichever you know and this is great i mean i love the way the teeth are going i love it when the teeth are all irregular and crazy looking <laughs> the tongue, oh, you, yeah. know, the, you know the, the more the crazier the tongue the better you know yeah well and this is uh, another one that sort of goes along that theme this is a hard one to get venom flashpoint it's like it takes because we just talked about Matt Gronoff being Scorpion becoming Venom. Now uh -huh. this is Flash Thompson, and this is the common. It's a hard book to find. If you guys, if you collect, this is one of the hardest ones to find because it's low print. It's a collection of Flash Thompson uh, six fifty four, six fifty point four point one, Venom one, and I think Venom two are all combined Wait, this into this. Rick Remender run. This is the this is the beginning. Like here's the Rick Remender's the first issue of it. Okay, and then it mm. takes issue one and two. And combines it when the first 654 and 654.1, when Flash Thompson becomes it, it's all one issue. But oh. it was like a 7,000 print run or oh, something like that. Wow. It's small. So tracking one of these down, this is one of the harder Venom books to find. It's a gorgeous. But just like this one, this it's oh. it's funny because this is classic Venom. Yeah. I w and I, I wish I grabbed an image. Issue like two switches completely. Actually, is an homage cover to 301. Um, right. But it's Venom dressed like Flash Thompson with the gun and the 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cargo pants pockets on his suit and all that yeah. stuff. Uh, like, but this is you. Oh, it's Eddie Brock, and then you read it. It's not. It's Flash Thompson, and it's a, that. Gr I actually love the remainder. He completely changed. If when I think of writers, he's one of the first writers that really McFarlane did it. But McFarlane did it with his art. Remender mm -hmm. did it because he took Venom and changed it. He took Uncanny X Force. Which I don't. I think you did. Did you do a variant for Uncanny X Force? I can't remember if that was one of your vampire variants. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think I did one. So, but yeah, he did some great stuff. But yeah, this run, yeah. remember, just the what he did there in that little short period, about four years for mm -hmm. Marvel, he completely changed how some of the characters were written. I loved it. Um, yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's a it's a big epoch in the whole Venom mythos. Yes, it was. It's great. I mean, shooting because Flash Thompson, no legs, is still now an important part of. He's a hero now versus just being that guy who used to bully Peter Parker. Yeah. So no, that's a great one. And we have uh, this is just a great run, great, great story. Once again, oh, start switching yeah. back. Oh, absolutely. Clayton Crane. There's another just genius when it comes to these symbiotes, like. Uh, you know, that one with the American flag for uh, Carnage mm. USA. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's oh, incredible. Man. Yeah, I mean, you could just go on and on. Of, of his, his symbiote work is just genius. Well, and, and, it, and it's almost like second nature to him. I interviewed him last year, or I guess it's a year and a half ago, and he's talking to me. We're like eye to eye. And he's painting. Oh, yeah. Venom. And he's barely <laughs> even looking at it. And I'm looking down at the thing going, it's a masterpiece. You're not even looking at it. It's unbelievable. Wow. He, he, this like second nature for him to draw these characters. He's a fantastic stuff. Yeah, no doubt. Now he did some Venom interiors probably too, right? Oh, uh, like, draw Carnage USA. He may have actually. Yeah, yeah. I think that does feel like it when you open it up. That it's the same style. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then switching Which is incredible. Gear. incredible. And Chris, I grabbed that issue too that you were just talking about. The that's issue why too? I look distracted. Oh, this okay. One. So it's yeah, that's what I'm talking. It's this is all of a sudden it goes from Venom one, yeah, over here to the very next issue, looking like a 301 homage, and this is Flash Thompson for the entire run. Now yeah. there's a second print of this that's near impossible to find too, where instead of it's a red and a white circle, it's gorgeous if you can track one down. But oh, uh, with a white circle, okay. It, I, but it's red. The the white backgrounds red. It like flip flops the colors, and that's what makes yeah. it a second print. Which right. sometimes that works on that particular one. It works really well. Usually, I get I don't like just color swaps for second prints. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it's a great cover. But I love the fact you go from super strong, massive dripping. Which there's like five prints of this. There's even like a pink one. Yeah, I think there's a pink and there's an orange. And those are hard to find. Sorry, I, this is the Venom run I love. Like I like Kate's, but I actually really like Remender's run. I just you can't like the, tell. 
Chris. You can't tell. I can't. I can't tell that <laughs> your excitement is just not. No. It's just well, not there. It's Chris. not there at all. <laughs> Whether um, because you know, there's like the Thunderbolts of Venom, where he's a lot bigger sometimes. Oh, yeah. Reminds yeah. Me of Chris. And then there's the more uh, normal stature Venom. So I'm not really sure why he grows bigger. If it's just an artist preference, but you know that's another fun thing to play with with him. That's got to be oh yeah, yeah, and that's with other like Crane. Just that guy was made to to draw Venom. Oh yeah, and that's the uh, that's the one thing. Like, I mean, I'm a Spider Man guy. I'm I like Venom as well. There's certain artists like. in my mind, I think of them for those characters. Like I yeah. think of Delato, I think of uh, Crane as being Venom people. I mean, McFarlane's and of course Spider Man Venom for McFarlane. Like those are the three. Like man, when I think of those, those are the artists I think of. Like they yeah. they mastered. Now Bagley I always associate with Spider Man, not as so much as Venom, even though I know he had a hand in creating. Oh, Bagley's a huge Venom. Yeah, he's- but it's just not the same in my mind. Like Delato's the guy now, and Crane oh. was. Four years ago, Crane can still do it. He's been doing fabulous variants, and yeah. now you got to some of the some of your other buddies uh, that you guys all do exclusives now. Yeah. Um, so Kirkman's been doing them. He's he, through Unknown Comics. Oh, been, a great Venom artist. Yeah. That, that's but, the thing. when I started doing these Venom covers. I I thought to myself, you know, what are the chances that you're you know? And I've done some Spider Man stuff, but what are the chances that you're going to be a great Spider Man artist? There's hundreds of great Spider Man artists. How many great Venom artists are there? You know, it's probably a tenth of that, or maybe twenty, or you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But you know, it's not as many, so there's more room to really stand out in that way. True, but the list grows as we're talking. I'm like, oh yeah, you reminded me of this and that. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, well, we'll, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Mike. I was going to say, let's not forget Stegman. I mean, yeah. just oh, his regular, yeah. oh, just yeah. his regular A covers are incredibly good. I mean, yeah. Uh, not to not to say anything about the interiors that he was doing too that are also incredible, but I mean mm-hmm. he's he's kind of built for it too. And oh, I don't know that I in that book. You know, I mean, yeah, it's it's there's a reason it's one of the best selling books on the stand. I mean, they're just delivering the goods. Oh yeah, yep. absolutely. Now, and there was a fl- a weird flash in the pan book that Mike loved, uh, Morella loved, and we all loved the cover. We weren't ex- no one ex- well, Morella expected it to blow up when he saw the cover. John Boyd Myers did this cover. Oh, that's and cool. I've seen that. It is for a kid's book. This is the, yeah. the IDW Marvel Action Spider-Man. Oh. This is not a, but look how freaking scary Venom is. Yeah. And I think that's why I loved it so much. It was the shock that it was on a kid's book. I was like, yeah. this is the most frightening thing I've ever seen on a kid's book. I loved it. I couldn't help it. So It's the 1 in 10 variant, I think. I'm not mistaken. It is funny. Like You could just do a dozen covers of close-ups of his mouth and teeth, and people would still never get sick of it. Well, no. What's the one, the glow in the dark teeth one? Uh, oh, really? Thirty seven. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's or, where it's uh, it almost looks like you want to take a black light just to say, have his teeth glow. Oh, on. oh. I, I thought you said there was maybe some sort of like hot instead of hollow foil they did glow in the dark. That no, they did. That was the hunger. Uh, the hunted. The issue for the hunted was okay. the first cover had a glow in the dark. There was a glow in the dark one, just like yep. they did for our Ghost Rider. The yep. Ghost Rider fifteen had a glow in the dark cover back in the nineties. Wow. Uh, well, the '90s. So yeah, yeah which all the gimmicks. Those, those gimmicks are coming back. I mean, how many? There's now. Uh, I think there's a black light cover coming out for a book tomorrow. Oh, but, it was uh, the Enemy Within number one. Enemy Within. But Mike, let's jump. Mayhew, let's look at some of your books. I love the fact that when you stepped into Venom, you went with classic art. So one of my <laughs> favorite artists for disturbing and freaking people out. Who yeah. is this based off of? Well, this is the artist Goya, and I can't take credit. The store, Black Cape Comics, came to me with this concept, or came to Marvel, and it was brilliant. And, uh, yeah, I just uh, very fortunate to get things like this. And, yeah, it's the only thing I regret, and I don't know if, I w- if it would have been a good idea or not. So in the, st- in the current Venom storyline, Venom is missing an arm. I believe it's his left arm. Mm. And it would have been interesting to have go- uh, uh, Ray, no, no. Uh, biting off the left arm, but then you would have to flip the art or whatever. But um, yeah. that was brought to my attention later, and I thought about it. I'm like, yeah. But, you know. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, can do that for issue 34. Because <laughs> I think I saw uh, Black Cape. I follow them on Instagram. They're oh. down to like 30 issues of this. Like it slowly picked up steam as issue 32 is coming out. They're yeah. almost sold out. I love this cover. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, 
It's which is rare. There's very few times that I've seen these. It takes a while for these Marvel variants to sell out because there's three thousand of them. Um, right. It, uh, well, yeah. I mean, that you know, I could go on a rant about that, but you got to think about it. Um, the cover Bs. There's only a thousand. Um, the the and, um, Virgin covers. There's a lot of damages. I'm on my like fifteenth Marvel variant at this point, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's hard to predict, but. I've had some print runs where I've thrown away 20% of what I have because I wouldn't send it out to customers. You know, the, the corners are smashed or, or this or that, and it's just junk, you know. And, and sometimes Thanks. Diamond will even give you a credit for things like that. Yeah. But, but, you know, people always sort of talk about these variants like, oh, it's not just 1,000. The artists are getting some and the writers are getting some, so it's more than 1,000. But it's probably more thoughtful to think of how many damages get thrown away and reduce yeah, you know, the well, we just saw uh, through Instagram they've been posting uh, comic book exclusives in a Star Wars variant, and mm-hmm. they've been showing the how bad the color rubs were on the back of some of these issues. There was a oh. misprint, and they even put the wrong store on the back of the issue. So oh yeah, so, like yeah. they have to send them back, and they only got half of what they ordered, and the 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 color rubs were not just. I mean, like these these wouldn't even pass for like sevens. They were yeah. so bad on the back. No, they're like cheese grater went over the top of them. Yeah, really it's, bad. it's the crappy. It's the paper. It's interior paper being used as a cover. It's just. Yeah. It's it's just a it's like a it's like a roll it's like playing a roulette like, you know I my Venom thirty twos were all in fantastic condition, and my Amazing Spider Man eight fifties. I mean, I could talk for five mm. ten minutes about the way they arrived and the the. the I had boxes open with comics spilling out of them from UBS, you know, and it's just, you know these are books that are like five five bucks a piece. Yeah. Oh yeah, because that was uh, eight fifty was the uh, thicker it was, book. It was square yeah. bound, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. And it just was. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. That whole thing was a disaster. So I'm gonna go back to we'll talk about thirty uh, thirty two. This thirty one. Yeah. I Damn, just felt- I didn't miss this one. I, this is a gorgeous null cover. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll tell you a yeah. funny story if uh, you know we have time. Yeah. I, I uh, and I never, I haven't told this to anyone. So my concept going into my Venom covers for my store was that I was going to have a variant uh, with the trade dress of, of a main character like Null or someone, and then I was going to have a cover B, and it was going to be like a page out of like you know what the Necromicon is? It's like this Book of the Dead from HP. <laughs> Like, there would be the Venomicon, okay? And I think I got this idea from Donnie Cates on Twitter. He was making a joke about that name or something. Yeah. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool, like, to have this ancient book from Null's planet, you know, with the – with you know how the uh, symbiotes have that weird lettering? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, their language. And, you know, you would have language around the, the character, like the page, and the pages would be kind of burnt. Anyhow, it just – it didn't end up working out. The, the thing that killed it was – I couldn't get the font from the letter because they owned it. And it was just too much of a rigmarole for Marvel yeah. to deal with. And it was like, okay, I don't want to cause any waves. So I went with something like this. But I, I just felt like, you know, Null seems to be the first big cosmic character in a long time that's almost like a Galactus level. Yeah. And I really wanted that's to show true. that, you know. No, it's well, you definitely do. It's gorgeous. Oh, I love it. You. He even has his wings out and everything. I mean, like I don't know how I missed this. I remember seeing the your Goya image. And I loved it. And I was like, "This is gorgeous." And then I missed this one, but then this one comes out. And I mean, of course, there's been homages, but you <laughs> you somehow capture. I don't know how you managed to capture the uh, holographic thing without being holographic. The the background that was luck. Oh, that was luck. Yeah, I had this web image, and I was able to sort of with some Photoshop layers make it look shiny. And yeah, people were in the comments uh, for like the post when we revealed, they thought it was a foil cover, you know? So uh, it definitely works. It and, does. And people uh, seem to love these classic trade dress, you know, where you kind of spin it in a new direction, but you, 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 you have that nostalgia mm-hmm. and it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to pull off. It's, it's, it's a lot of work, but you know, when it all comes together, cause you know, I did some of it, like I did the null drawing and some of the, you know the the Spider-Man corner box, but then Marvel bullpen did the the logo behind Venom in the corner box and that kind of mm. thing. And mm. When it all comes together, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. whatever the background is, it kind of pushes him forward. It kind of pushes him at you. Like yeah, yeah, yeah like the foil would have done. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, 
So then you did three, you did a gold, and which is I love the if people don't know, they're the venom. Well, the, I think what is it? The venom gold was a one for one thousand or one for it was a it was a hard to find variant. There was three books that came out that had this gold background. The Damn black it. was a misprint, right? The black it was, was the little, misprint. It was a little the hollow foil yeah. too. I think it had it was gold, but it had webs like mm -hmm. hollow foiled in it. Yeah, there was like three books that Marvel did that year. I think I think Gambit was one of them. This one, and I can't remember the other one. They're super hard to find. Um, they're, I think they sell a for white thousands one too, right? There is That's a white one too. Yeah. The okay. white one and the black were both misprints, color misprints yeah. by the printer, because oh. either they either they missed the red or they missed the um, or, um, white. Might they missed the been. they missed the foiling, right? Then they missed yeah, the, they the foiling. foiling. Well, although the although the black one um, and mine mine the Venom logo doesn't have it. The black one, the original, has this drop shadow in red uh, on the Venom logo and the whole corner box. And we have ours on the corner box. I don't know how it didn't end up on the logo, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. So that's, that's awesome that's just that you chose to do that. Yeah. Full, like I, I, full, full, one hundred percent homage to the errors <laughs> as well as the and yeah. the variant. That's awesome. Like, That's really, it wasn't really until I cool. I looked at the that I saw it. And I was like, "Oh God, you actually homage the two harder to find books that people really go crazy for." <laughs> yeah. Really All cool. you need to do is put a little barcode down at the bottom for newsstand, and then you'd have the complete set. Okay. <laughs> and hey, shout outs to uh, Mark Bagley and Sam De La Rosa for creating the artwork. I mean, uh, yeah. You know, they they originated the image. Their 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 signature isn't on the original. And mm -hmm. it threw me. Um, I did research, and I couldn't figure out. I didn't know that Sam inked the artwork, and mm -hmm. um, I ended up contacting him afterwards. And he sent me a scan of the black and white. And I guess they signed it off to the right corner, like right here, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, something like that. Yeah. And, 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 but they signed yeah. it where the trim was, and it got <laughs> cut off. Oh, oh, that's better than the how many artists back in those days signed it where the freaking box was. Right, right. <laughs> like I think back to even like Neil Adams when he was like one of the first ones to start signing his pieces. How many yeah. times his signature ended up under the barcode? Yeah. So it never, oh, yeah. never, you never knew it was his book versus a Chua or a. I mean, well, uh, it's a further, the further uh, add, uh, insult to injury. So I had mine and my signature, and then after Bagley's signature, yeah, uh, sort of uh, where his uh, left. Uh, sort of trapezoid is. And okay. Yeah. I got the cornerbacks from Mar box back from Marvel. I didn't realize the number and all that would cover it. So I had to move <laughs> it to the other side. It was like, it was on its way to the printer. And it's <laughs> yeah, but it's so, funny how uh, it goes. So you, uh, 33 is coming out or just got released or just coming out this weekend. That's right. Uh, we just uh, revealed 33 on uh, social today. It's on my Instagram. Okay. And it'll go on pre-sale Saturday, January 16th at 10 a.m. Uh, my site, KRS Comics, East Psych Comics, uh, Black Flag Comics, and uh, Mutant Beaver up in Canada. Okay. Awesome. So that's awesome. I love how it's nice when it's spread out from stores because sometimes like a one store might sell out, but I can go to the other store and track it down, or I can go to your site and track them down when I'm interested yeah, um, I do like like that. Though at the same time, it's a little bit harder paying shipping from Canada. Uh, it's yeah. a little more expensive sometimes. But uh, yeah, and the I, cool thing about that one is that's the Lethal Protector number two cover. Mm -hmm. And uh, but when we do the classic trade dress, you know, uh, kind of this uh, type of treatment. But on cover B, we do a virgin cover with Carnage, and in the in the on the wall and graffiti, it says "Let There Be Carnage." And Ooh. I really didn't know if they let me get away with that because that's the title of the Sony movie. Well, yeah. Marvel doesn't have any rights to Sony, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, and I kept asking, I kept asking Marvel, um, "Is this okay for me to do?" And then they never got back to me, and I kept <laughs> waiting for them to be, you know, at the last minute, like, "Oh, you got to change that. We can't." <laughs> so, so what you're saying is, order Corvo B before they gets recalled, so we can right. get those issues. I hey, you know, there was that Star Wars, Wars issue. Would be good. There is that Star Wars, that old Marvel Star Wars issue that said Last Jedi as the title on the cover. And that thing went for crazy money for a while till everybody okay. had the movie. And okay. of course, yeah, we, it dropped right back down again. But you never yeah. know. This could be the one. Same reason. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it's, it's fun to play with. I think, like I say, you know, uh, we're all kind of jonesing for the big blockbuster movies we're not getting. I mean, you know, uh, mm. I, I, Venom was supposed to come out, what, last year? 
And, yeah. uh, you know, so it's kind of fun to kind of whet people's appetite, give, give people something to, you know, get their gears going on it. Well, we saw, we were talking to John Boy uh, Myers, and he was talking about the COVID affecting everything. And one of the things he said is like, I did a G.I. Joe variant. I was the only guy on the market doing this variant. And then COVID happened. And then 20 other guys hopped on this G.I. Joe book. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I remember when we were talking to you, you had just released, I think it was 273, your G.I. Joe cover. And then you had yeah. 274 in the works, which is gorgeous. Yeah. And then you had that uh, X-23 cover that Mike sold his soul and bought. Um, no, he, he was chasing <laughs> that. Uh, you have one book coming out that has nothing to do with Venom. But I love it. It's this blood sport or not blood shot. Blood oh, shot. Blood shot. Yeah, thank you. I, I just want to bring that just because talk a little bit about that cover and we'll throw the image yeah. up. We don't have it. We'll throw it in here. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, uh, uh, Valiant reached out to me. I'd never done a Valiant cover. And uh, I, 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 I like one of the editors over there. So I, I, I took the gig and then uh, I ended up working it out with the store exchange collectibles. It's the first appearance in comics of KT, who is the female in the Bloodshot uh, movie. And, uh, you know, they well, the only her. characters I liked in the movie besides uh, Vin yeah. Diesel. <laughs> oh, she's a cool looking character. She's got cool powers. And, you know, it's just, and, and the price was pretty attractive for people, too. It was like yeah. uh, 50 bucks for a three cover set. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm in the store business right now. It's like I like to have something every, maybe three times a month. Mm-hmm. There's no shows going on this year, and this is the way to make people happy, you know? Yeah, yep, absolutely. And to connect with people, and, you know, I don't expect people to buy everything, but it's it's kind of like my boys' cover I just came out with in December. Like, that was just so fun. To, I, I, it was there. Was, a cover B was limited to 200 copies. We offered Garth Ennis signatures. It's just something kind of cool, you know, that y- you can't get everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's what I know in all – you, those of you that we, as we talk to more artists and figuring out this this dynamic of not being able to do the con season or whatever, like I've seen one or two things on Instagram. Either every two months, guys pop in and say, "Hey, opening up commissions, reach out. Here's here's my list. Here's my slots. Here's what I can do." And you drop it that way, or like you've done, and stores have started doing. They've gone. Guess what? We're going to do as many exclusives as possible, just because it it puts your face your your style on different books and especially for these big Marvel books and these big D- DC books, part of me doesn't like it at all. But yeah. at the same time, that Venom book's not going to be worth anything. So why not buy the art that I like? So I, I'm going to pay 10 extra dollars so that I can get your Venom cover because that's the cover I like out of all the sets that I can choose. Um, yeah. And then it's when you guys do those changes. For a, whole, a, a different time because I could really go into it, but you know, that, that 1000 unit cover B is such a compelling collectible and when you combine that with the fact that there's just people that are still making a lot of money and they don't have time and they want something delivered they want hand-picked collectibles delivered to their doorstep yep the formula it just works right now and it's gonna it's probably gonna continue to work in the future yeah. Well, and, and I think probably for Chris as well as me maybe a little less for Chris these days uh, uh, maybe Peter too but I've I buy very few store variants but I'll tell you the ones that I buy, I will knock over a little old lady to get it. It's like, I mean, like it, when I, when I latch on to a cover that I like from, I don't care which artist it is, if it's you or if it's somebody else, I mean, I want that thing and I don't really care how I, how I have to get it. You know, yeah, most yeah. of I'll ignore 90% of that market or maybe even more than that. But the ones I want, man, they are the ones I want. And, there's and Instagram no- is dangerous because yeah. you guys yeah. post these beautiful pictures and they go, Hey, it's coming out next week. I'm like, I'll send a forward it onto Mike and Pete, and they're like, damn you, you just spent my money. Um, spent all my money. <laughs> my wallet hates you. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Yeah. But, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. This, I love talking Venom and geeking out with Venom on with you <laughs> on these covers. Uh, it's it's just been fun. Uh, you Guys, if you don't go to his store and check out what he's doing, he mentioned several different stores he works with. Um Check out their sites, buy his exclusives on there. If you like Mayhew style, which we all do, that's why we invited him back. We love his style. We end up spending our money. It's funny to me also, you've done Star Wars, you've done Zorro, you've done X-Men, you've done you've done such a variety. If I like a character, I can find a cover that you've done featuring the character. I might have been working on some Star Wars stuff today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spend my money again. <laughs> uh. No, is it Osaka? So they were... <laughs> 
Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there's a, there's there's one thing in comics that people are wanting the Star Wars right now. So, oh yeah, I think I got a pretty cool uh, angle on things. Uh, you know, I, I I think I might even have sort of a uh, uh, an ex- not an exclusive, but a little bit of a spec play going here. So we'll see. <laughs> you, you just made it all oh, day. Okay, <laughs> dropping a golden <laughs> nugget right at the end. Wow. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, all right, guys. We'll, We'll we'll see you. We'll get this out, and you can check it out. It'll be out this weekend, or may, maybe Monday. I think we switched our drop day to Monday. So thank okay. you so much. I appreciate right, it, Mike. Thanks, Thanks so much again, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.